Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and in this video I thought it might be fun to have a little discussion about the random YouTube comments that I get that make me question my existence, wonder about the sort of people that are watching my videos, and just generally get confused over things. Now this isn't necessarily to poke fun at people and the questions they ask, because some of the questions are actually very useful because I use those to integrate them into future videos and improve the quality of what I'm delivering and you'll see what I mean as I go through these but some of them are so strange and obvious and weird that they just make me pause for thought and one example for example the first one that I get quite a lot a surprising amount of times is how do you charge this wireless mouse now this I've seen on several different videos over the last couple of years, including the, the SteelSeries Aerox 3 wireless, the Logitech G Pro X Super Lite, the glorious Model O wireless. I've had people ask, how do you charge this wireless mouse? And it's an unboxing video where I've showed all the various things that are included in the box, as well as the USB cable that you use to plug it in. So you plug the mouse into your PC and it charges when you need it to, or you can use it in wired mode, and people question how do you charge it, and I don't really understand that question, I find it very confusing, and I think maybe it's not that obvious about how you charge it, maybe I'm assuming that it's obvious, and maybe I should include a bit in the video about how to charge it, I think that's so obvious that I might end up looking a bit stupid, or like I'm patronising people, and it's a bit of a concern, because it's a bit strange, it's really obvious to me but I think that's one of the things that actually comes out of these comments is that sometimes things are obvious to me but they might not be to other people so maybe it's worth talking about in videos but there's obviously only so many things you can cover in a limited amount of time the next one that's kind of similar to this but maybe is a bit more reasonable is that people often ask where does the liquid go in this all-in-one cooler I've done videos on various different all-in-one coolers, 360ml, 240ml all-in-one coolers from NZXT, Corsair, Lee and & Lee, and various other companies over the last few years. And those all-in-one coolers are designed to keep your CPU cool by running liquid through them and then obviously cooling the radiator with fans. I've shown all the various things that you need to do to set this up, including applying thermal paste where necessary, the installation process for installing it on various different socket motherboards, including AMD and Intel, mostly Intel admittedly, but also the orientation of fans, where you plug in RGB cables, how you power the thing, all sorts of other things, plugging it into the power supply unit, where you connect it on the motherboard, and then people ask simple questions like, where do you put the liquid? And the answer is, you don't, because it's an all-in-one cooler, the liquid is already pre-installed for you, it's designed to make your life really simple and that's really obvious to me however it perhaps isn't immediately obvious from just the packaging or the name of the product although they don't include any liquid in the box you think that would be a clue but then again sometimes you have to buy extra things to make things work so i suppose it's a reasonable question but then it makes me wonder whether i should include a little bit in the video on how this process you don't need to fill it up and that's one of the benefits of having an all-in-one cooler versus a full liquid cooled system it's sort of plug and play and easy i often get comments as well where's the thermal paste do you have to apply thermal paste and you know this is something i actually cover in the video and i point out that they often have pre-applied thermal paste it's on the pump head so you don't need to worry about it but people still ask and it's weird and confusing that they've not watched the video properly but i mean you know there's, that's two different sorts of people asking questions. Now the other one I often regularly get asked is why is your left shift so small? Which sounds really personal, but it isn't. It's about the keyboard setup. Left, why is your left shift so small and why is your enter key so large? And that's to do with the variations in layout of the keyboards. And you can probably see it here on this one. If I unplug it, hold on a second. So on this keyboard, you can see uh, there is a large enter key and then a small left shift and the reason for that is quite simple this is the UK international layout and the American version has a thin enter key and a large 
left shift and some other slight variations but those are the two most obvious ones and that's the reason so that's a, that's a reasonable question because it's not obvious and it's something i didn't know a few years ago if you come from a certain area you get a different keyboard layout and i have used both and let me tell you i hate the american layout the small enter key is super annoying because I just end up pressing the wrong button all the time. Having a really large enter key is wonderful because when you just want to smash enter and go on to the next line. And the left shift, I'd, I'd never really been bothered about having a small left shift because I only use my pinky for it and so it's not been a problem. And I, that's not something I've noticed the difference between when switching between American and US layouts either. So it doesn't really bother me, but I find that interesting. The next question I get asked quite a lot is why do you compare this product with that product. This makes no sense. You really should compare it with this instead. One example is this chair. This is a secret lab chair that I'm sitting on. I did a video to compare it with a chair that I also happened to have in the office that I'd only just recently reviewed. And I got a lot of people saying, this makes no sense. Why didn't you compare it with this other chair from Noble Chairs? And the answer is quite simply because I only had those two chairs and so I can only compare what I have and I'm not going to get in loads and loads of different chairs just to compare things that other people might think are logical. Uh, I mean, it's reasonable, but I thought it'd be an interesting comparison. I had the two things. I thought it might make an interesting video, so I did it. So a lot of the things that I do are based either on searches, so I've looked to see what people are looking for, or on gut feeling, or on what I have already to hand. And sometimes I just like to make things because I think it'll be interesting. Now this actually applies quite a lot to mouse videos. I do a lot of mouse comparison videos where I take two mice and I compare them. And sometimes it's really logical because they're obviously very similar. The Razer Basilisk Ultimate and the Logitech G502 come to mind with that. That's quite a popular video of mine, and the reason is obvious because they're basically identical. There are some slight feature differences, but they're very, very similar otherwise. And Razer has essentially copied Logitech and made something quite similar and very nice, and there's a reason to compare them. But then other times I've compared mice and people have questioned why I've done it. And even in my mind, I know it's a bit of an odd thing to do. So for example, the Rocket Cone XP mouse that I reviewed recently is a wired mouse. And I compared it with more expensive wireless mice. And the reason, quite simply, is because I think it's logical. Because sometimes a mouse might have superior features and specifications and yet be more affordable. So it might make a better option where, you know, it's a wired mouse, but it might have more DPI, it might have more buttons, it might have better RGB lighting, it might be lightweight, it might be lighter than the other option, for example, whereas the other one's wireless, and maybe it has some other functionality that makes it more impressive, but it's significantly more money, and so I think that's uh, worthwhile. Another thing, I might compare them based on simply the shape, and it might be that they're vastly different in cost and specs, but the space the sort of shape, the ergonomics, the fit in the hand, and the comfort is very nice. Or maybe I just feel like they're two great mice that I think are worth comparing. And I get a lot of complaints or people saying, why did you compare this? This is stupid. I've compared it because it's my YouTube channel. I want to do it. I thought it'd be interesting and people might find it interesting. If you don't want to watch it, you don't have to go to the comments and complain about it. Just don't watch the video. It's a very odd thing to do in my mind. Next one is, are you Snape? No. Are you Henry Cavill? Sadly not. I'm not as rich or as handsome as he is. And then there's a lot of questions about are you Mione? Are you Shadow Frax? Are you XYZ British YouTuber? No, I'm not. Those people are not setting up another YouTube account to then start doing mouse reviews. They'd probably use their own name to do such a thing if they wanted to and ride off the fact they've already got loads of subscribers and then they'd get even more subscribers on their channel rather than pretending to be someone completely new. <laughs> so I am unfortunately just the provoke Grawn and I am who I say I am and here I am you can see me as a rare occurrence because usually you just see the product itself. Another one I get quite often is why didn't you show this thing in the video? And sometimes this can be really frustrating. Sometimes it's a valid point but other times it's really annoying. 
I've had this quite a lot on build guides, so on the PC build videos that I've done, or on motherboard videos, or I go into a lot of depth and cover a lot of things. I had it recently on a motherboard video that I'd done where I unboxed it and I showed how to install it, and I talked about all the various features of it, and how you plug it in, how you connect it. I did tests on it and all sorts of other things. I showed the software and other bits that you could do with it, and then I got a complaint. Why didn't you show the RGB lighting and how to connect it? And it's just, I can't believe it, uh, so frustrating. And people don't seem to understand and realize how much effort goes into a build video. Putting a PC together can take a couple of hours. Putting a PC together while filming it with multiple cameras, as you can see behind me, I've got several cameras from different angles, trying to cover all the different points, capture all the things of important note along the way, everything that might be useful to anybody and then taking all that content and editing it down and putting it into a video that's concise and interesting and engaging and useful can be really tough. I can't cover everything though. Uh, I try as I might. Uh, no one's ever happy is one of the things you'll learn about making videos. No one's ever happy and you can cover as much as you want. And sometimes I worry that perhaps I go into too much depth on the guides. I cover some things that are really basic and obvious. If you're just looking, if you're an experienced person that knows how to build a PC already and you start watching one of my videos and maybe it's a bit too basic in some places, like here's how to install the motherboard or here's how to seat the CPU and install the RAM. Those are obvious things to me and to those people, but they might not be to someone that's new and has just purchased a case and wants to know how to build it. So that's sort of a thing I worry about, like how do I present my videos so that they don't patronize people, but are also really useful to those that need it. And that's uh, something that I'm struggling with, I'll be honest. But if you have any feedback on that, let me know in the comments. Another one I get is, why do your hands shake so much? Which could be very offensive. You really should be careful who you're asking that because some people do actually have problems with their body where they do shake. Now you can actually if I try and sit still, I was shaking my hand on purpose a little bit there. Well, I am actually a bit tired because I've just been exercising, so my muscles are kind of achy and uh, my hand actually is shaking a little bit. But generally speaking, it's because I'm trying to reach around various cameras. So off to the side of me, you'll see, I'm trying not to knock things over. There's, there's a camera here <laughs> and there's another one down there and there's another one behind that. And then there's two over there behind me. And a lot of the time I'm on the floor by that desk behind me reaching around various cameras and lights and trying to get into a good angle so put my hands around the camera so you could so I can then pick up the thing wherever it is whether it's a mouse for example is the NZXT lift mouse I'm going to do a video on shortly and then trying to get that into the camera view and sort of show off the various parts of it and sometimes because it's so awkward or because I've been at it for a while it ends up being a bit shaky and it looks like there's something weird going on with my hands it's not because I'm nervous, because it's a recorded video, I'm not super nervous about doing it. It's just because I'm tired and the whole thing's awkward, reaching around various things to try and do it. It is worth noting, however, that I am also doing videos mostly at night. Usually I'm creating my videos at night uh, from about 8pm. I've put my kids to bed, I've been working all day because I work a day job and this is just a hobby and then I'm doing that, creating videos from 8 p.m. till about 11 p.m. At usually, and I'm tired already, so sometimes the shake is just because I'm exhausted, to be honest. And well, that's also why my videos are often chilled out, and some people ask, why are you so bored? Why do you sound so tired? It's because I'm old, man. Look at this grey. You see that? Anyway, this has been the Provoke Brawn. I hope you found this video useful, hilarious, or otherwise. And also let me know in the comments if you'd like to see me do a reaction video to all the random comments that I've got over the last couple of years beyond these. This has been the Provoke Brawn. Thanks for watching.